In this video, we're going to work through an example of using the Bresenham's circle algorithm. Now, the problem we have is to draw a circle with radius 9 centered at the point 5,8. So I've drawn a little table out here and we will work through the first couple of results here and then I will show you the rest of the results on the next page. So the first thing that we want to do here is we'll follow our routine that we've seen in the previous video. So we're going to have one and forgive the handwriting here, it's not the best using this tool. So the radius here is going to be a value of 9 and our xc which is just the center point for our x is equal to a value of 5 and the center point for our y is a value of 8. So these are the three parameters that we will bring into our function whenever we generate it in our assembly language. Now the initial conditions that we're going to start off with are x0 is equal to 0 and the y0 is equal to the radius. So the radius here in this case is, is 9. Now we're going to work out the initial decision algorithm, the initial decision value, but first of all we can put these in. So we're going to start off with the value of 0 and the value of 9. Okay, so the first decision value P0 is equal to 3 minus 2R, which is equal to 3 minus 2 times the radius, which is 18, which is equal to minus 15. So we can put in a value here for our PK is minus 15. Now, the next thing that we can do here is we can work out the offset values. So we're going to have x0 plus xc is equal to, well, it's going to be 0 plus the xc, which is 5. So it's 0 plus 5, which is equal to 5. And then the offset here for the y is going to be y0 plus yc, which is equal to the 9 plus the 8, which is equal to a value of 17. So that's the value 17 here. So you can see here that this column here is nothing other than the x and y values with the offset for the center point added on. Okay, so it's always going to be this column here plus 5 will give us this value, and this column here plus the 8 will give us this value here. So now that we've got those, we're now in a position where we can actually plot this value off. So we could get in here and say 5, uh, we're wanting to uh, plot this 5,17. So I'll just put 5,17. So we're going to plot this off. Now we can go through our test and we can say that if the value for our x is equal to or greater than this y, then that's the end of the algorithm. But in this case here, 0 is less than 9, so x is less than y. So if it's less than that, then we can just continue. Now we can move on to the next section. So we can see here that the value for pk is minus 15, so we can say pk is less than 0. So if pk is less than 0, then we know we're going to have x1 is equal to x0 plus 1. So we're just moving to the next x coordinate along to the right. So that's just going to be 0 plus the 1, which is equal to the value of 1. So the next coordinate to the right is a value of 1. And we can see that y1 is equal to y0, which is equal to the value of 9. And then we can work out the 
next decision algorithm, next decision value. So P1 is going to equal P0 plus four times the value of X1 plus six, which is equal to P0 in this case is minus 15 plus four times the value of X1, which is one plus the value of six. And this is going to give us a final value of minus five. So the next decision value is minus five. Now, at this point here, we're now in a position to go back to point number four. So what we're going to do now is continually loop around from when we get to seven back to four. So we'll go four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven. And we will continue doing that until this X value is greater than or equal to the Y value. So in this instance here, if we were to go back to this point here, we would add in the offsets. So we add in the offsets here. So the offset again is one plus the five, which will give us a point six. And the nine plus the eight, which is a value of 17. And then we can go ahead and we can plot this. So once we've plotted it, we do the test. One is still less than nine. We continue and the PK this time, the PK is still less than a value of zero. So if it's less than zero, we then go through the same process. Now I'm not going to write the rest of it down here like this because it's not very neat or tidy. But you can see the process that we're going to go through in order to uh, finish this algorithm off. And remember as well that if we were to find the value PK and if the PK wasn't less than zero, um, if it was a uh, uh, greater than zero, then we would have x would equal x0 plus 1, y1 uh, one would equal y0 minus 1, and the decision algorithm for the p would be p1 um, would equal p2 plus 4, and it would be um, uh, x1 minus y1 plus 10, okay? So it's a different uh, decision uh, algorithm for the um, p values. So let's just stop this here now. I will go ahead and we'll, I'll show you in the next page um, the rest of the working. And again, that's a good idea for you to work through it yourself as well. So these are the final values that we have here. And you can see here, whenever we get down to this one here, we've got the X is equal to the Y. At that point there, we finish off the algorithm. And these are the points that we're going to plot out. Now, I suggest that you work through the algorithm and try to generate each of these values. So let's go on now and we will see this in our assembly language. Now, before I continue, there is one other thing I have to cover, and that is the algorithm so far hasn't generated the complete circle. It has only generated enough points for one octant. That is, it's only done 45 degrees of the full 360 degrees of the circle. Now, if you see this diagram here, I have a, a circle in effect split into eight quadrants. Well, so we've got quadrant one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So each of these is 45 degrees. And you can see I've put a little X in each of the quadrants, which, which just represents one point within that quadrant. Now, so far, we our algorithm has only covered this first quadrant here. So for this first 45 degrees. But what we do is we generate it for the first 45 degrees. Now, in order to get all of the rest of the quadrant, all of the rest of the octants for the circle, what we can do is we can reflect all of these points on each of these lines. So, for example, if I wanted 
um, all of the points in this octant here, then all I need to do is reflect all of these points in this line here. So that point will be reflected over to there. A point here would be reflected down to here. A point up here would be reflected to a point up here. So it means that we would get that other octant. And again, we could reflect it in this line here, which would give us uh, the points in this octant. And we could ref reflect this uh, on this line here to get the points in this octant and so on and so forth. So we can just reflect in order to get all of the points of the circle. And that's how the algorithm is going to work. Now, before we go off of this here and look at the assembly language, note here that I have actually put the points down here. So the center of the circle here is going to be X, C, Y, C. So we're going to have some point which is going to be the center of the screen. So let's say the point for the center of the screen is going to be somewhere over here. Okay. And then we're going to have the center point of the circle, which is the XC and the YC. So it means that this point up here can be given by the value XC to get the center of the circle. And then we're going to add on the value X. And we're going to have the YC and we're going to add on the value of Y. So that point is XC plus X, YC plus Y. So again, we can reflect this point. Whenever we reflect this point here, we get XC plus the Y and the YC plus the X, okay? Because um, we're reflecting in the line Y is equal to X. So the Y becomes the X and the X becomes the Y. Now again, you, we can reflect in each of these and I, I'll leave you to read over each of these. You can pause it and have a look. And we're going to get each of the values that you see here. And you will see this within the code. So let's go ahead and we'll look at the code now. Now, as we've seen in previous videos, we have two pieces of code. The one on the right is the calling function. The one on the left is a subroutine. Now we'll talk through the calling function quickly. We're going to push three variables into the subroutine. The X coordinate for the center of the circle XC, the Y coordinate for the center of the circle YC, and also the radius of the circle. We're going to jump to the subroutine, which is called graph underscore circle. I've picked out a memory location within the ROM for the beginning of this subroutine, and this is it here. Now, when it jumps to the circle subroutine, it'll run through and it'll generate the circle, and then it'll return back to the next line after the jump to subroutine. So it jumps back to this end, and it just ends the code. And you can see here, I can put in values for our circle. So I can put in, say, the x coordinate is 40, and we'll put in the y coordinate is 40, and also the radius is a value of 10. So we'll save this, and this is the one we'll run a simulation on. Now, whenever it jumps into the circle routine, then it jumps into this routine here, and you can see it's quite a large routine. Now, it only really looks large because we have to do outputs for all eight quadrants. So you can see here, if it was just one quadrant, it would just be this little section here. But we've got to go through for quadrant two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, I'm not going to talk through every line of this in detail because it's just too complex and time consuming. What I want to do is give you a flavor of how it works. And if you're interested, you can always um, run it for yourself on the machine and you can check through every single one and zero and you can see where it goes to the machine uh, in infinite detail. So we're going to start off with a bit of um, housework as we normally do. First thing is that we're going to be using registers R0 to R5 and we have to take the original values for those registers and go and place them somewhere within the memory. Now, another thing we have to take care of in terms of our housekeeping is a test to find out whether someone has put in a circle with a negative radius, because we can't draw out a circle with a negative radius. So if the value for the radius is less than or equal to zero, we're going to get through to a trap. So this trap will be trap number six, and it will just end the program. So you can see here at the very bottom, or near the bottom, we have a trap number six. So we can go to a spreadsheet if this trap occurs and we can find out the trap number 
and we can see that it was a, the trap is a negative radius while trying to draw a circle. So that's pretty straightforward. Now the next part of it is through the actual algorithm. So in the algorithm here we're going to first of all put a little uh, dot in the screen that just signifies the center of the screen. We're going to convert our numbers um, into the positions at the center of the screen. So for example, and we've seen this in a, a previous example as well, uh, the, the, the top left hand corner is the zero zero and the bottom right hand corner is 256 by 256. But I want to have the center point, which is 128 by 128, that will be the actual center point of the screen. So this offsets the X and Y in order to give that central position. Now we're going to go through the steps. Now these steps are the same steps that we've seen within the description of the code uh, in the uh, previous video. So you can go through each of these steps and each of these steps are going to recreate the um, algorithm as per the previous video. So I'm not, I'm not going to talk through each of the steps. They're self-explanatory. You've got the explanations on the right hand side. You can compare this to the um, actual algorithm and you can see how each of the terms are generated. So for example, there's the initial condition P equals three minus two R and also setting up the initialization X is zero and the Y is the value of the radius R. Um, and we can come down here and these are, these are the outputs. So this is the actual the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. And then we're going to add on the offset for the radius, which is X, C and Y, C. Um, and then there's the final outputs here. So this really takes up most of the time. And we've got an output for each of the quadrants. And again, these quadrants match up with the quadrants which I showed you just a few moments ago. So we've got quadrants one to eight and these follow through each of the outputs that we generate for each of the quadrants. Now, again, I don't want to talk through all of the details of all of these. Okay. Uh, in fact, most of them are, are um, a template and just a couple of values changed here and there in order to get the correct values. But you can see here at the top of each one, you've got a, an output here, the, the output that, that it provides. So if, for example, here, this quadrant six provides X C minus Y and Y C minus X. So you can work your way through each of these as well. And this plots off each of the required values. Now, uh, a little note here as well. Um, initially, the circle was only able to be generated at the center point. Um, and uh, one of the students I've mentioned before a few times, Timothy Morgan, he came up with a solution in order to get it shifted to any coordinate for one of the octants. So I was able to take that and then generate it for the other seven octants. So thank you very much, uh, Timothy, for um, uh, generating that little bit of code for me. Now, at the end here, uh, we're going to go through the comparison for our X and Y. And if the X is greater than or equal to the Y, it's going to end the code. If it isn't, then it's going to generate the, um, the decision values when P is greater than or equal to zero and P is less than zero. So the decision values for P greater than or equal to zero is here and for less than zero is, equal, is in this position here. And that's really the final part of it. Um, at the bottom here, we jump back to step four for each, each coordinate. So we'll get back up to step four, which is up here at this point here. So we go back up to this point here and we continually work our way around until the X value is greater than or equal to the Y value. And then finally, we take all of the uh, register values that we saved in memory and we put them back into the registers. So we're leaving the CPU exactly as we got it. In effect, you wouldn't know we've even been there. So that's all of the code. What I'll do is I'll just run up an example here and it, it takes a couple of minutes for it to draw out a circle. So what I'll do is I'll just record it and I'll fast forward it and you can see it drawing out the circle.
circle has been completed. The little red dot here is the centre of our graphics display. The centre of the circle is along 40 and up 40 and I've generated this circle so that it is 40 radius. So the diameter here of the circle is going to be 80. So that's us able to now generate circles of any size anywhere on the screen. We will continue with the graphics and the mathematics library over the next few videos. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.